All right, folks, welcome back here with Prof D talking about vertical and horizontal scope. Hope you enjoyed part one. Part two, we're going to talk about a case of two companies, Amazon and Whole Foods. I'm going to show you two videos about Amazon and Whole Foods um, and basically the acquisition of Amazon by Whole Foods. And I want you to use your prior knowledge from the course and the things you learned from this lecture as you watch the first video. Then take a moment to answer some questions. Okay? Um, and there are these questions I'm going to give you. And after you've written down those answers, watch the second video. Okay? Now this is a little bit challenging, but just really if you follow the steps. Look at the questions, you know, and maybe you need to pause it to get the questions. Um, but write down the answers to the questions, watch the video, and then and then think about whether or not your answers made sense. Okay? So here are the questions. What is Amazon's business strategy? Okay. What is Whole Foods business strategy? What does that imply about the way they are organized? What kind of action was this? And I know there's an error in the slides. I'm sorry. But what kind of action was this? Was this vertical or horizontal integration? The Amazon Whole Food merger slash acquisition. Why did Amazon acquire Whole Foods? What resources, competencies, transaction costs were at play? Should Amazon have tried to acquire a different grocer? And if so, who? Okay, those are the questions. I'll back it up for a second and let you see all of them. All right, so here's a good moment to hit pause and, make sure, and write down some answers and then watch the video. All right, video. In Bloomberg reports, Amazon wants to shed Whole Foods' pricey image. The online giant is reportedly expected to cut jobs and change inventory to lower prices. An Amazon spokesman denied any job cuts were planned. Amazon announced Friday it is acquiring Whole Foods in a deal worth nearly $14 billion. Whole Foods shares jumped 29 percent after the announcement, and Amazon closed up more than 2 percent. But shares of competitors like Kroger, Super Value, Walmart, and Costco plunged. Megan Murphy is editor of Bloomberg Businessweek. Megan, good morning. Hi, thanks for having me here. So why do we have this market reaction and what's going to happen to these companies? Well, you can see how it decimated other retailers in the sector. And that's because they think that this deal, Jeff Bezos' biggest bet, $14 billion, their biggest acquisition by far, is going to do what he's done in other markets, which is he sees inefficiencies. He sees this as still an inconvenient process of us going to shop. This is an $800 billion market. But 75% of family spending on groceries still occurs at physical stores, still occurs at brick and mortar. If he can take that and move some of it online using Whole Foods, really exposing people across the chain to Amazon's other products, Amazon is going to get more into your life than they already are. And we know groceries is the single biggest revenue contributor to Walmart, for example. Well, exactly. And that's one person they've really been battling at. Walmart has been looking on the flip side. They're very big in brick and mortar, but they've been working really hard on their online presence to how to compete with Amazon, bring in someone from Jet to redesign it from tip to tail about how they do those services for people. But Amazon is a, a beast in terms of spotting markets where they think they can reduce inefficiencies, where mm. they think they can make it easier for us to shop. And that is what he sees here. He's done it with books. He's done it with newspapers. He's got you now with the prime service where you pay special to get movies delivered, et cetera. So he sees this as a market. This is his biggest bet. This is something that people have said could be his biggest, his worst bet, his Waterloo, some have described it at, or his biggest transformative. I bet on but, Jeff but Bezos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He got a name. He got a lot of real estate. He got a bargain, as many people feel. I mean, so the potential that these Whole Food stores will now change to become pickup centers, distribution centers, whatever else. I mean, that's a, that's a fascinating part of this. It's huge, and I think it's more likely that they'll be hybrid. You have to say that a lot of people call Whole Foods. It's got a ton of fans, but it's also got a lot of people who call it Whole Paycheck. They say it's too expensive. What's going to be fascinating to watch here is how do the prices come down? Does he change the mix of organic high-end food? Does he try to attract more rural consumers, people who are less familiar with the brand, Almost 60% of Whole Foods are within 10 miles of a Kroger. Mm. Can he sort of get more people into the brand? 
is he buying it more, as you're saying, for the sort of high end, or is he buying to really democratize Whole Foods? And, and to you, use as a, as a distribution point. Exactly. When you talk about inefficiencies, the story of retail and the labor market is a dismal one right now in America. Absolutely. What are the implications for the people who work at Whole Foods? Again, if he takes some of those stores and moves them at, into distribution centers, we're going to see some type of job losses there. They've said they're not going to cut jobs. They've kept the existing CEO in. But look, we're moving towards robots, and we're moving towards robots as robots and stores as well. They already have bookstores, they already have parts that are uh, totally automated from the beginning to the end of the process. This is just the way things are moving. The U.S. is actually further behind Europe, particularly the U.K. and the automation of the, of the grossing sector. We'll see if he, with all his genius and what he's done in other markets, can take it into our supermarket sector. He made a sector. quick, interesting point. He said in a newspaper article over the weekend that I've made a lot of bad mistakes, and only because I was willing to risk bad mistakes did I have the big winners mm. that I have. You can't win some without losing. Well, he's certainly swinging for the fences here. What? Megan Murphy, big relaunch of Bloomberg Business Week. Congrats on that. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. All right. So, what's happening here? First question. What is Amazon's business strategy? What is Whole Foods' business strategy? All right. Amazon is more or less a cost leadership company. They are trying to bring you things cheap and fast. That is primarily what they do. Whole Foods is more a differentiated, a differentiated company, differentiated provider. They are selling you both higher quality products and better customer service than you might see in other grocery stores, and that's reflected in their prices. Okay. So what does that mean for how they're organized. Okay? That means that Amazon is set up with crazy technology and grim efficiency. Right? That's how they can get things to you in two days. Pretty much anything in two days, sometimes faster. All right? Crazy technology, grim efficiency. Whole Foods is more set up to try to provide an amazing customer experience with likely lots of decently well paid workers. Okay? Those things don't really mix, right? So it's possible that the two setups won't mesh that well. And maybe that's why Whole Foods is, hasn't been rebranded as Amazon Whole Foods or anything. It kind of is still standalone, understanding that some of those things don't work. I don't know about lots of what's happening internally at Amazon, I mean at Whole Foods, but you know, maybe some, they got rid of some employees. That's what happens in mergers a lot of times. That's how we recognize costs, by getting rid of, uh, getting rid of actually certain jobs. So what kind of action was this, vertical or horizontal integration? Well, this is technically horizontal integration. As strictly speaking, Whole Foods and Amazon are not in the same parts of the value chain of an industry. Okay. All right. But if Whole Foods can become another endpoint for certain Amazon products, as they mentioned, and vice versa, well then you can make a case that this is a horizontal integration story, but with a vertical integration chaser. Right, where Amazon almost effectively becomes the delivery for Whole Foods, right? the, like the distributor on the customer end. That would technically be more, more vertical in, 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 in size, okay? Now, why did Amazon acquire Whole Foods? Okay. They mentioned this in the video as one of the reasons um, one of the reasons that they did it, and the and the idea is that Amazon is great at reducing inefficiency in supply chains and value chains at other companies. Okay, and it sees grocery as having a lot of inefficiencies that could maybe be smoothed out. Right? The key idea behind a, a sort of general horizontal integration story like this is that you have a very talented manager. Bezos. Now, you, you can say other things about him and sort of things that he's doing, much in the same way you could have some things to say about how Walmart operates. But the truth is that they're both companies that are very, very good at being efficient. Okay, Bezos is a manager who can bring a skill set and add value to another organization by making it more efficient. So in theory, now, and that's in theory, right? In theory, he could do that. There's a possibility, of course, that the whole food culture and the culture of Amazon are not congruent and maybe they won't mesh well, which could be problematic. Okay. 
And some of you are probably wondering, why would a company like Amazon foc that's focused on costs want to acquire a company like Whole Foods that while it cares about costs is more focused on trying to have customers with a high willingness to pay because they're a differentiated competitor. You know, I was wondering the same thing. In fact, I was wondering that if Amazon was trying to buy a, a grocery store, why wouldn't they buy something like um, Aldi or, you know, or uh, Trader Joe's, right? Because there you have companies that are both already focused on deep efficiency, okay? And they both have private label strategies that meshes quite well with Amazon's overall move into private label stuff too. All right, these are all things to consider. Now, you probably couldn't necessarily answer all of these questions, but these are some of the things to uh, think about. But now, um, here's another video. The first video was in 2017, okay? Well, this next video is a year later, uh, you know, and they had, a, they had a year of trying to figure out how they were going to work together the you know the two the two companies so let's see what happened it's been a year since amazon bought whole foods here are seven ways that the deal has been a game changer for the industry one whole food stores look different they now sell amazon devices like echo in some stores, there are signs for special discounts for Amazon Prime members. Whole Foods has also begun to offer free delivery for Prime members. Two, things are also changing behind the scenes. Whole Foods has begun to centralize its merchandising. That means it's now taking care of in-store displays and setup, rather than outsourcing the task to third-party services. Three, it's trying to make a regional grocer national. It's changed the way it's bringing in new food brands into its stores. Before, it brought in new brands on a hyper-local basis. Now, it's trying to streamline that process and make it more efficient. Some of these changes had begun to go into effect before Amazon's acquisition. Nonetheless, it's been a rocky transition. Four, Amazon has found a treasure trove of data. It's beginning to become clear why Amazon bought Whole Foods. For one, it's getting its hands on lots of shopping data. As Amazon combines its prime service and Whole Foods shopping experience, it's getting even more insights into how the same person shops on and offline. Five, it's begun to tackle the challenge of fresh food delivery. Again, Whole Foods stores have already begun to help Amazon tackle a challenge it had long struggled with, the delivery of fresh food. Unlike shampoo or paper towels, fresh food can spoil quickly and can be costly and complicated to deliver. Amazon also got the Whole Foods brand name in the deal, lending an authenticity to which today's generation reacts strongly. Six, the sleepy retail industry has woken up. Things are changing outside Whole Foods, too. The industry is not only scared of the marriage of Whole Foods and Amazon, it's now facing the infiltration of European competitors Aldi and Lidl, discount stores that are attacking traditional grocery stores on price. In reaction, grocery stores have slowed down their new store growth, and instead, they're focusing on acquisitions of technology or platforms. Walmart bought Flipkart, Target bought Ship, Kroger invested in Ocado and bought Home Chef, Albertsons bought Plated. They're also increasingly focused on fresh food, prepared food, and even restaurants to draw shoppers to their stores. They're pushing their own private label brands, which are more profitable for the stores. They are also making a push into the organic and specialty space in which Whole Foods made its name. Seven, big food is getting crushed. As grocers react, Food companies, too, have been impacted. Emphasis on private label, fresh food, and specialty food takes shelf space away from the country's largest packaged foods companies. Focus on price is squeezing the margins these companies have long relied on. But it's been a tough year for them. Many, including General Mills, Hershey, and Campbell, are reacting in turn with large, expensive deals. It's too soon to say whether those deals will have saved them, but the stakes are high. That's what we know. What do we still not know? Lots. The percentage of grocery shopping done online is small. How much larger will it get? Whole Foods relies on UNFI for its distribution. Will Amazon renew that contract or will it attempt distribution on its own? Whole Foods used Instacart before the Amazon deal and continues to do so. What does its relationship with Instacart mean now that Amazon is pushing its own delivery service? Whole Foods' footprint is also far smaller than its largest grocery competitors. 
Is that footprint enough for Amazon to accomplish all that it wants within the grocery space? Hey there. So that was actually pretty interesting. And, you know, it informed several things that mentioned earlier on let's just talk about a few of them okay so there's definitely some resource relatedness okay amazon can layer its efficiency to execute national level strategy they talked about various kinds of merchandising things that amazon was doing that would allow more of a you know so basically some benefits of scope economies right it's more efficient amazon already has that stuff um so they can apply their ability to execute national strategy across like more spaces right okay um Another thing is resource relatedness. Amazon food shoppers plus prime equals mad data. Like that's literally synergistic, right? They're basically saying, all right, we can get people to scan their little app, you know, if they're a prime member and we can track all this. Amazon can track everything that they're doing, right? That treasure trove of data can be very useful in marketing and targeting customers. Okay. So there's definitely clearly the, the, the whatchamacallit, the um, resource relatedness, efficiency you know data sources thing okay all right but there's also some transaction cost stories that we can talk about here amazon can think about essentially taking the place of unfi unfi is whole foods distributor right amazon is good at logistics maybe it could effectively try to take the place of being unfi right and so that would that would actually potentially reduce some transaction costs so that's interesting but amazon can actually act as delivery service for online shopping and i think we're seeing some things about that especially um related to the you know the covid uh, pandemic right amazon basically acting as the last mile delivery point for bringing goods from whole food stores to to the customer right so we see some transaction costs thing too other things that i hadn't thought about right is we see some reaction from the industry okay other grocers are are moved to imitate all right they, they've been moved to imitate what amazon is doing so more private label stuff more fresh food more prepared foods okay now, the, the thing about this is that we know that supplier power is already a little weak, right? But some of the, in the grocery, but some of the bigger brands, General Mills, Hershey, Nestle still had some power, okay? But suppliers get a little roughed up because more and more stores have private label things, okay? And I'm sure you've seen them. At um, Whole Foods, it's 365. At uh, Costco, I think it's Kirkland, right? These are private labels. Right. And when there's more shelf space occupied by private labels, the big packaged food companies get, get you know, sort of get impacted. Right. So we, we see even a further reduction in supplier power, um, partially as a result of this uh, this merger. Now, an indirect result. Right. Because basically it's other grocers reacting to Amazon. Now, one thing to think about is a, a pestle concern, like an, an ecological factor is sort of is, is COVID. Now, COVID was a bit of a mixed bag for Amazon, as near as I can tell, right? So first of all, um, you don't think of Whole Foods like this necessarily, but it was effectively one of the largest sit-down restaurants in the country, okay? People would go get some stuff from the hot bar and sit down and eat, right? That's where a lot of I mean, Amazon, I mean, Amazon, Whole Foods makes lots of money doing that, right? But when the pandemic hit, preferred foods declined at least 70% just right away. OK. All right. Um, but people weren't going to restaurants either. So grocery sales went through the roof with closed restaurants. And so they sort they didn't necessarily make up for all the prepared food losses, but grocery sales went through, you know, definitely went through the roof. Um, and Amazon logistics expertise was really needed to get online ordering working for Whole Foods. Right. Actually, initially it was a little rough. And I don't know if Whole Foods as a standalone company would have been able to adapt to curbside and delivery as fast if it didn't have Amazon as a, as a parent company, okay? And this all goes in the fact that home sale, online sales were up year over year. Some people say they were up 3% for, for Whole Foods, which is a lot. Now, the question, of course, becomes, will those online sales continue, right? Should they continue? Well, the case for Amazon's efficiency and uh, know-how for logistics and delivery is just continues to be made, but it becomes less of a boon if online sales don't continue. So it, it's really a question of this, whether this particular pestle concern really has made a permanent shift 
and how we engage with retailers, especially grocery. So I hope this was interesting. It's a little example to just so you can see where resource relatedness and transaction costs play out in a merger that you may have heard about, but at least with two companies you're familiar with. So I hope that was uh, interesting. And as always, just I want to say thank you for putting up with the old prof. You know, um, these, this is a, you know a new modality for me, and I'm working my way through it. So I, I really appreciate it, and. Uh, just keep on doing things. Talk to me in Slack. Talk to me via email. And I look forward to hearing from you all soon. Take care.